Welcome, this is Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. This presentation explains the mechanics of team size. The choice of a size is an elective, but only within a range. That range is set by the biology of humans. It cannot be escaped. The key to understanding team size is the concept of transaction channel. It is not a communication channel. Communication channels are passive. Transaction channels are active. In transaction channels, the parties pay attention to each other. Each person's behavior is at least partially set by what other people are doing. This makes transaction channels both expensive and powerful. Because everyone is paying attention to everyone else, everyone can act in a coordinated manner. That is the power of the team. With two people, you get one transaction channel. Things are pretty simple. There is only one person to watch and respond to. With three people, that one channel jumps to three. You added one person and got two more channels. With four people, you go from three channels to six channels. You added one person and got three more channels. Four people is the start of the Goldilocks zone. This graphic shows the size distribution of about 3,800 actual teams operating in the real world. Most teams in corporate America fall within a zone beginning at four people. We now begin adding one person at a time. Every time a person is added, the number of transaction channels grows geometrically. Things are beginning to look a bit complex. Coordination keeps getting more expensive. Here we are at nine people. This is the end of the Goldilocks zone. It is also about the average size of a team. Some are smaller, some are bigger, but they average out to nine people. Once again, this is the graphic of the distribution of team sizes. The Goldilocks zone runs from four to nine people. It has 25% of the team sizes, yet contains 60% of the teams. This is actual experience. This is what firms do. Since these firms have been in business for a while, you've got to believe that they know something about what works and what doesn't. You ignore their experience at your own peril. Things start really getting messy when you go over nine people on a team. When you get to 12 people, everybody on the team has to watch 66 transaction channels. The leader is stretched to the limit. He or she will begin neglecting some transaction channels. Things are going to start to break. Even if the leader can stay on top of it, team members themselves will start breaking down. People will begin to miss transaction channels. Coordination will slip. The group will continue to exist. What is lost are the characteristics of a team. You can argue whether four to nine people is the real Goldilocks zone. However, whatever it is, 12 people would seem to be the limit. In the real world, 83% of the teams are 12 people or less. This is no accident. As you go over 12 people, things really start getting messy. Somewhere beyond 13 people, the human capacity to manage transaction channels is exceeded. It is not a matter of skill or an elective. It is built into the system. Humans only have two eyes, two ears, and one brain. Capacity is finite. The only question is exactly when that capacity will be exceeded. The fact that it will eventually be exceeded is a certainty. At the point it is exceeded, the team will naturally evolve into a division of labor strategy. People begin to reach you do this and I'll do that agreements. Once this happens, the team is dissolved into a work group. Division of labor is not a bad strategy, but it is not what you bought when you created a team. If you wanted a work group, you should have set it up that way from the beginning. That way you can rationally allocate jobs rather than leaving it to chance. Transaction channels are the cost side of the team building equation. You know with absolute certainty that every increase in size adds cost. However, transaction costs say nothing about why you want to form a team in the first place. That reason is found in the diversity or different dimensions that added people bring to bear on an issue. It is the balance of cost and benefits that determines the success of a team. The first job of a leader is to set the scales in the right balance. If that is done wrong, the leader will have built in a bias toward failure. That bias can be overcome, but only at a cost. It is a cost that the leader and team members need not to have paid. The cheapest strategy for resolving a problem is never to encounter it in the first place. Thank you for your interest. If you want more information about IOP technology, please visit us at www.iop.com or 
oeinstitute.org. Both sites offer much more information and insight on group processes of all kinds. Thank you again.